My name is Yolanda Reyes, and I present to you my story, A Life in Color. This semester I studied at CSU Chico, a university that is located on the illegally occupied ancestral lands of the Machupta. We recognize their distinctive spiritual relationship with this land and acknowledge it as their ancestral home. I am humbled to live, study, and present to you from their sacred land. My story begins with those closest to me, Uheyake Yoemia my family, which descends from the First Nations Yaqui people. Mala, my mother, Achai, my father, Wai, my sister, Sila, my brother, and Anepo, me. These people have been my supporters, and without them, I wouldn't be here today. In high school, Achai gave me a book of Nahuatl stories, which had no pictures. This lack of visuals was the catalyst for me to take my art seriously. If our stories lacked illustrations, I knew I could draw and fix this discontinuity. At the age of 22, while attending art school in San Francisco, I was rear-ended while working. The L4, L5, and the L5-S1 discs pictured in this MRI after my accident show them protruding into my spinal column. For years, I fought workman's compensation for access to treatment. Eventually, I lost feeling and mobility because of the compression of my spinal cord. Waiting for treatment, a dark wave of depression swept into my house and over me. I coped with my deteriorating situation by painting. I used our sacred Tunapuali for guidance and inspiration. I found guidance from the personifications, what colonizers refer to as deities, for important dates. I felt like I was stuck in purgatory, the state of suffering for those who die in God's grace but still need to atone for their past sins to go to heaven. The decline in my physical abilities and countless doctor's appointments made me wish I could just remove my lower body. For years, I was prescribed copious amounts of prescriptions to help manage my mental health and pain. Eventually, I found myself living out of my car on Brown Street. Family friends adjacent to Sila on this street provided me access to internet, showers, and some respite. I couch surfed for several years, waiting for my multiple disc replacements to fully heal and to be medically released to work. During August one year, I was sleeping outside with my service dogs. Eventually, the Perseids meteor shower enveloped my vision, and even though I was homeless sleeping outside, I felt had I been comfortably inside a house, I wouldn't have been so blessed with one of the oldest recorded celestial events. In Nahuatl culture, Tepe Yotl's coat is representative of the night sky, and surely I thought he must be watching over me. I managed years of insecurities due to disability and found myself along the rivers in Sacramento. I longed for a better quality of life, but also felt very lost and overwhelmed, like a vine pulling me down. I prepared for the worst, living along the rivers in a tent, but hoped for the best. I felt worthless, unable to work, and unable to pay for the basic necessities due to my disability. I believe the personifications for my birthday foresaw my mental health decline. Miklantecutli and Xochiquitzo learn of my suicide by drowning in the Sacramento River and decide to visit Huehuecoyotl. Bringing an offering of deer hides and flowers to Huehuecoyotl, he sends Sochi and Masat with Miklantecutli and Xochiquitzo to my house to protect me during the hardships yet to come. When I told my pain management doctor that I wanted to stop taking morphine, they recommended that I transition to methadone. It was at this point I felt Western medicine had provided for me everything it could. I decided it was absolutely contraindicative to continue on their path of recovery. I turned to traditional medicines and exercise, biking the American River Trail, seeing wildlife such as skunks, birds, and turkeys. I spent many days meditating on what to do. Would I succumb to my depression and journey to Tlaloclan, the destination in the afterlife for those who die because of water such as drowning? Or should I stay in Sacramento where Xochipilli, the personification of artistic creativity, offered opportunity? With Tlaloc watching from the river behind me and Masat staring them down, I had many things to consider. It was during this time as a homeless person volunteering to help other homeless people in my community, I felt satisfaction and worth. We shared many experiences and hung on to the few positives in our daily lives. Sacramento has a thriving creative economy, and there were many opportunities for me to try to make a living, even though I was not medically released to work. I was accepted for a six-month solo exhibition in Las Vegas. This motivated me to continue working toward being medically released to work, I needed money if I was going to frame artwork, make prints, and drive my portfolio hundreds of miles to Las Vegas and back. 
Eventually, I enrolled in American River College and decided that computer engineering would provide me financial stability to manage my housing, food, and medical needs. I participated in events like the college's debugging bee, solving problems with hardware and software. While at American River College, I was selected to complete a 30 by 40 foot oil painting that spoke to the diversity of our campus community. I started applying for grants and scholarships and was awarded several Mathematics Engineering Science Achievement Awards. My optical fluorescent spectrometer was inspired by my Nahuatl culture. Here I am at the Los Rios Community College School District's Mesa poster presentation showcasing my 3D printed design and awards for my work. Had I given up on myself, I would not have created the items shown in this video. I would not have completed my associates in physical science, computer science, or mathematics. Every step forward I take, I look back to where I came from and think of those still struggling. For me, success is measured by how many people I bring up with me. Leo Semchokaway, thank you.